Okay, we're recording. So I want to do something that I haven't done before because I want to get myself into that position that I think people are in when they sit down to draw and have no idea what to do. And I've been thinking about this because we were out on a hike. We've got some of the most beautiful conservation districts. So we're able just to leave our house and within 10 minutes be at these gorgeous places in the middle of woods and streams and just beautiful and very thankful to have that. And as we were leaving, we're driving home and Rob, my husband said, you know, I really would love to draw that tree. I know it, I can see it in my mind. And we had passed it on the road on this particular um, drive that we go on. And I'm thinking that, well, yeah, you can draw this. And of course you could. And he says, I have no skills. You know me, I can draw like a stick figure, but he can't do the hands on the stick figure. And I'm thinking, you know, is it possible? So I guess what I'm doing right now and what I want to do is I've got a tree outside my window in my front yard and it's not a simple tree. It's really complex with all these branches. So that's kind of my waiting of myself. You know how they wait race horses. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to give myself something kind of difficult because I do have a skill set I've been practicing, which is drawing and sketching. So I want to draw this and I want to see if I can kind of verbalize through it or let you into a bit of my process and how this works, because I'm going to share my screen. This is kind of what I'm all about here is a sharing my screen. Okay. So this is something I've been working on and you should be able to see blender pencil eraser review. And these are the steps. And I know this is like me beating the proverbial dead horse on this, but I do think that this kind of is a key to being able to draw because this is what happens pre-drawing. So in the first step, I've taken a 6B or an 8B, some graphite pencil that has a lot of blackness in it, which is gonna be the high Bs. A 2B, you can do it, but you'll only get kind of a darkness of this and you really wanna be able to get a nice black. So I'm using the blender. And the reason I use the blender is because I think when you start drawing shapes with a blender, you're not drawing the lines and you're able to access a lot more information that you don't even know you have. So the first step, get a nice big splotch of black. Second step, use a blender stump to, and this is apparently not a tortillion. I just found that out. One of my students said, I don't think so. Blender stump is what you want, not tortillions. And I'll go about the difference. It's the way they're made, I think is the difference. Here on step three, I'm darkening it, keeping dipping the blender back into this big pile of ink, using it like a paintbrush. Finally down here, I've grabbed a 2B and now I'm starting to outline the circle. So I have something, I already have something to outline. And so when I get here already, now when I outline that, look at this and here's a little more blending. This looks pretty cool. If I would have just started with a circle that I may or may not have drawn well, I don't know if I would have stuck with this because I would have gotten so hooked up on, oh, my circle doesn't look good. Who cares? At this point, you're, you're just approaching this right now. It's, it's a learning. It's something that you're attempting. So to me, it doesn't seem to go down in flames as your first step is your best idea here. So by creating something, which is this shape that you're forming, you're starting to get a form that then you can outline. Now, look at this. This thing looks great. So here's all the fun, cool little things. And to, the practice here is to be able to build up this level of darkness where my cursor is down here in the lower right corner, to be able to build up black all the way across to white. And you may have to get in here with an eraser and that's what this is. I'm using a small mono zero eraser. This tip on the eraser is similar in size to a pencil tip. And I can use that to get in. I used it to erase out light spots. I use it all the time for this. I don't make my blends like this so perfect. I'm still needing highlight up here in step six. And that's what I use the eraser for, to go back in. So. I'm stopping sharing that. So that is kind of like my background process is that. So here's my, 
idea on the tree. Now I'm going to come over and I'm going to share a different screen, which is going to be this. So this is just regular um, paper from a sketch pad. This is a um, looking to see what brand this is. It starts with a P, I'm pretty sure. See all the things that happen? I wasn't intending on showing you this, but hey, it's Piccadilly. But the point is, it's really super smooth. This is not textured paper. And the only reason I rip it out of here, I would keep it in the sketchbook, but I don't. All right. <laughs> I forget you can't see me. I keep it. I rip it out. I would keep it in here. If I were you, I would keep my learning sketches in the same sketchbook and date them. Why not? Or just put 2020 learning. I rip them out because my setup, you can see like right here, I've got a film thing and I've also got a table that raises this up so I can actually draw and I'm really moved over today so I can actually see the tree. But I tear them out because I can't draw up on that platform of this too. This is really weird to rest my hand on when I'm drawing. I need a flat surface. That's the only reason I tear it out. You'll be able to draw on this because you're drawing on a flat surface. Mine is up and raised and weird. It's probably way too much information. Anyways, let's get back to drawing. All right, screen share again. Thank God for Zoom. Okay, so what I'm gonna start out with is what I always start out with, <laughs> this poor piece of paper. And my this is a, a 9B, which is awesome. Um, 9Bs are not easy to come by. Uh, you get them in a set if you get a really nice high B set or you can buy them, I think, individually. So I've got a lot of black built up on this. So what I'm gonna do now is loading this up, making sure it works. And if it doesn't work, easiest way to do this, plus you're like, huh, I actually know what this thing is for. You know what, this may be used for something completely different by other people, this is what I use it for. So there, cleaned, but when I do that, I get a much nice, much nicer line. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, all right, here's my tree. It's got a trunk. So even if I start in the little kid area of, okay, there, there's my trunk and I'm gonna assume attachment to ground. I can't see the roots of this. They're below my window frame, but I know, and so do you, you've seen tree roots. You know what they kind of look like. They kind of spread, maybe they branch a little. And yeah, they're under the ground, but some stay on the surface. So from my memory, I'm compiling other tree roots that I've seen and I'm adding them to the base of my tree. All right, little kid thing, you know, this, the symbolic drawing, I'm not gonna do that. That's really valid though. It gives you an idea of how big that tree is compared to its trunk. So that isn't wrong-minded or wrong thinking to do that. It's just, it's winter right now. So I can't see the leaves. So I have a branch on my tree and it's attached here. So I'm gonna draw a circle for that attachment point. And then I'm gonna draw a line out. On this, and if you think of a branch of a tree, it branches. So put a branch in and let's make that a really simple branch. I'm going back and dipping more. I've got another branch. I'm just going to make a circle. And it too, this one kind of goes up like this. And you know what? I'm going to make it branch. There's another one. This is a young maple. And I mean, it's got like a gazillion. So we could be here all day with me doing this. But I want to just get you started so that you can see. Okay, so every time I do a branch. I'm doing a circle to remind myself that is the beginning. You could think of like the insertion point to the branch, however you want to think about that, but get that circle in so that you know, oh yeah, telling myself branch there. I also know another thing about trees is they're bigger at the bottom, they're smaller at the top, and a lot of times they do this. Trees branch and they branch all the time. So I'm going to draw a branch that branches. So this time I didn't put a circle because this is actually part of the trunk that's going up. Here's a branch that's branching off and here's maybe the main branch. So does it make sense? This is going up, still my tree and going up that way. 
So that is part of the tree. It's not a branch coming off. This would be a branch branching, okay? Other side, I'm gonna do another one that comes up and I'm separating. If you see what I've done, I've made the trunk, which is one solid thing into two. And that I do see happening on the tree in front of me. And now it branches off. Same thing that I did down here, putting a circle and making a branch that branches. I'm gonna continue this one up and say, this goes up and these are going right off into my beautiful tap of my cut off, ripped off paper here. Okay, so let's say that this is my tree. How am I gonna get this to go from this? It's not bad, it says tree. Most people I would show this to would say tree. I know a tree has bark and I know in general, bark tends to be up and down the tree. It doesn't go around so much. It goes up and down, so vertically. So I'm gonna put some lines really light up the tree. I'm gonna carry it a little bit up into these and maybe one up into that. That's my bark. Now I'm going in, cause I'm losing some color here. <laughs> this, is, this is it, that tells me that I'm done putting this down. <laughs> it also tells me I'm done with my 9B for a little bit here. All right, so here is me building this up. Now, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say, right, sun up here. That allows me now to really darken this part. This is the back side of my tree. If this is my sun, the shadow falls on the far side. So I can go in and I really can put a lot of shadow on the far side of this, of all my branches, right? I'm not putting it on this side because theoretically, the sun can hit that. But on the far side of this, I can put that in. So now I have all these branches that are dark. What if the dark is the far side? And what I mean by that is, if this is my far side, the underside, that means that there's a lighter bit that goes here. So all I did is just added that. If this is my underside, and I'm darkening that up because it's away from the sun, that means that there's also a top side to this branch. And I'm just lightly gonna put that in. Here's my insertion point, the dot that I made. Here is my underside of this branch, and I'm gonna put on the very light top of this branch. Because these are pretty big branches. They haven't thinned out yet where I could just leave them a single branch. This is weird because it's in the middle of a tree. Normally this is a foreshortening problem, but if I just say, all right, here's my insertion point. This is the underside of this, cause I already did it and said it was. That means that there's a light side here and there's a light side here that goes to the top. Okay, so that might look confusing right now, but because I broke my 9B, I'm grabbing the next best thing, which is a 2B. But to this one, so this is the one, all right, watch this though. If I put a pencil line on what was my original dark, you know, just that branch that came out, but I'm beefing up this underside now. I'm gonna still put that little circle in, but I also know now that I have this. I have a top side of this. So this is such a great way. That branch is right facing. It's, it, this gives such a good realism because most people avoid the branches that come out at you. Sun's here. I know that this is gonna be underside in shadow. So I'm skipping ahead and finishing up this a little bit, but you can see that now when I go in and underline and put a line and I'm, I'm now I'm, I'm not, guessing, I know that this is where this line goes because I've already sketched it in. I'm just making these crazy little movements in here because, hey, that's what bark looks like. Putting this underneath, giving a little bit more bark look, which is, means I'm doing like this, crazy little circles. Because if you think about bark, that's kind of what it looks like on a tree. Now, if I go back in and blend this,
Okay. Yeah. It's a weird branch. Is it still super thick? Yeah. But look right here. Opportunity. Let's make another branch come out. And this one, because it's lighter, maybe it's further behind. But when I go in now and say, okay, there truly is a branch here. And because trees branch, you can bring another one up. And now you're refining it because I'm actually using a pencil that is not as smeary. So I can just keep branching those branches out. I'm following these tracy lines that I put down. Some of them I wasn't even sure if I was going to use. But if I outline these now, and this say maybe it's a broken branch. All right, let's make it look like that. Boom, done. Convenient. It was going to go off the page. But now you can see here's a branch. I can fill this out back here. Oh, look at that. It's going to branch. And maybe it's going to branch this way as well. And here's this. I can go right along here. But do you see how so quickly from all these very strange, mistakey looking things, you can start putting together what is going to look very much in the end like a tree. Again, the dark side, I'm coming down in here. I've already got all my darkness. My form is here. All I'm doing right now is saying, yeah, and it's kind of broken a little bit. Oh, guess what? Here's another branch. But that's it. These are all random. I'm not looking at the tree outs, my, my window anymore. I'm saying, you know what, from my very basic knowledge of trees, I do know what they do. So you can see by, as you continue doing this, I've now got the ability to go behind these because I've picked up one, a 2B. I'm working behind this. So when I come down this far side of the tree, again, with confidence, because I know it's here, I drew it in with that blender, I can really put that right there. Look at that. That is just dying to have another branch. But by adding, this is now where I'm just having fun. I'm no longer worried. Does it look like a tree? Yeah, it looks like a tree. Most people are going to buy that this looks like a tree. Coming down. All right, here's my crazy little roots from before. But look at that. Just squiggles, mess, just like this kind of thing in here. Look at that. That was my first line that I put in with the blender. So a little cross hatching over here, maybe to darken that in. Go up a little bit. It looks like this tree trunk is almost twisting a little. On all that is unintentional, right? Now I'm going to go in, I'm taking my blender stick, and I'm just blending all this together. These that were the light stripes, they still maintain lightness coming down, but does that not look like a tree trunk? I think I'm going to teach Rob how to do this because I think it can be done. And now you can go back in and say, all right, little unbalanced. This looks really straight over here. Maybe there's some more stuff over here happening. But these can go in with just the blender. You don't ever actually even have to do anything more to these than this. And you're constantly able to go in and add these hints and suggestions of branches that if you want to say, okay, I'm going to make them a little bit more real, you can. But it's so, it's not simple, I guess, in the fact that it's easy necessarily. I guess what makes it easy is that you just trust your innate ability, even if this is what you know about a tree. You're not wrong. You're not wrong at all about this. So even if you say, all right, the, the key thing for me is that you understand where the sun is, okay? Once you understand that, that gives you enough information to do this. And once you know that, even on that, that basic tree, again, just kind of messing around, putting in these random things, but again, on the underside where the shadow is, all of this. And again, this is a two because as we witnessed earlier, my 9B did not wish to go further in this. So this is kind of crazy and thick in here, but hey, some trees are like that. So now if I go in and start adding my branches and maybe some, and I love putting those dots in there because that really gives you a secret way to automatically have the shading in the right place. So anytime you put a branch on a tree with the blender, just pop a big 
thing of darkness right there. Even look at, I don't even have a branch there, but I'm going to put one there. So going up and coming out and use that kind of as your benchmark for all branches, this insertion point, because when they're there, it makes it a lot easier to go back in and say, yep, that is going to be a big under connection. That's where my shadow needs to be. This chunk down here, it's pretty thin. I'm going to thicken it up and look at that. That's, I mean, you can just add to this. It's, it's really never going to be a total washout. And that's starting from that kind of thing. So I think it's worth playing with. I think it's worth looking at this because you're going to be able to go in and really understand in so many ways how that works. And so what I have and what I'm using is the blender, the 2B, the 9B. I've got a bunch of erasers. I've even got a kneaded eraser. So that's it. That's all you really need to start with this. And instead of this fancy thing, you can use an emery board too, which is great. But try it. Try the trees because I'm going to get Rob to do it. And I'm going to post that. And we'll see if it's a success or if it's a failure. But I think, um, I think it can be done. I think this can be done. So try that. Try that. And I'm going to see if... Um, I did record this, so it is actually going to be a video. That's always, always a gift. Thank you.